Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. We are very happy to have you here. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Uh, we are here today at our very first digital event of the season. We are going to have several here today. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of information about the structure of the next hour, and then we'll move on into the presentation and learning aspect of it all. Um, but I will first start off with some intros, and then Corey is going to take it um, take over at that point. And then at the very end, we'll have a Q&A. So um, feel free to ask any questions. Um, you can save them for that time, or you can also just ask um during the presentation as well so feel free to do that at any point so i am sam anderson i am founder of studio ladder i do technical marketing consulting create 3d content um, my background is at epic games and shop architects so i have a lot of experience in the 3d world and so i'm happy to be here today with you all we also have Corey here, CEO of ArcVision. So we are very lucky to have him here. He is truly an expert at all of these things with many years in this industry. Um, he has been pivotal for a lot of creators moving forward and moving workflows forward. And honestly, he's just um, very enthusiastic about this. And so I'm so happy to, to be here and to, to always be learning from him here. And then we also have Kelsey here. She's our sales operation manager. She's going to be the go-to person for any questions that you have. She's the amazing person that's going to be behind the scenes, making sure everything runs smoothly. Um, she'll be grabbing those questions for us and um, just making sure that we have all the data that we need to best help you with all of your workflows. So that being said, we are going to be dropping in a few polls throughout the presentation. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. That just helps us understand what events in the future we could do for you. So with that being said, this is a time for us to learn. It's gonna be very casual. So um, I hope that you are, feel free to ask Corey any questions that you've got and we're here to have a good time. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it off to you, Corey. Feel free to add on to uh, any of the introduction that you want to or um, or just start talking about the, the power of RPC. I'm good, Sam. Thank you very much for the introduction and all that. And um, super excited to be here for you, with you all today. Um, and Kelsey, thank you for all your hard work putting this together. Just a little background so everyone knows uh, what we're up to. Um, what ArcVision is about and so on and so forth. Um, ArcVision has been around since 1991. We've um, started cutting our teeth in visualization work and production back in the early 90s. And uh, ArcVision saw pretty, uh, our founder, Randall Stevens, uh, found a pretty big need for um, addressing what we'll say uh, com complicated 3D content coming into 3D applications to render in photorealistic mode. And these guys back then envisioned this um, technology, which we're about to talk about, which is RPC. And back in the day when they origin originally kind of uh, conceived of this, they they had, you know, very um, kind of, I'll just say a, a simple tool set back then. Uh, no, no high-end digital scanners to be able to, capture image texture and mash and things like that. They had cameras and they had a built-in, uh, sorry, a, a, a turntable that they had built to literally put people on and rotate rotate them around as they snap 360 degree pictures of, of each person. And then they took those images and they put them inside of a file format, which is our .rpc file format. And basically um, those RPCs would be, get brought into a 3 Studio Max or 3D Viz at the time. And anytime the camera uh, uh, was pointed at one of those objects, it would render basically an image that was inside the RPC file. So the RPC uh, started as a file format and it's evolved over time uh, to have a C++ uh, API or SDK, I should say. And that C++ SDK um, spread out so that we could have uh, vet, uh, software companies like Autodesk or um, uh, the guys from Form Z, as an example, or McNeil, uh, and, uh, to be able to take our SDK and build plugins for those applications. 
So to this very day, RPC plugin technology still ships with Revit uh, and a couple other apps. Um, but nowadays we we have uh, a, a web API, which is extending RPC technology into a whole other realm of uh, digital asset, uh, 3D asset uh, collaboration. Uh, we'll call them digital twins and so on and so forth. We'll cover, we'll get into the weeds more on that in, in uh, a couple of webinars down the road here probably. Um, but uh, RPC today, um, generally speaking, uh, you have an empty space and you need to fill this with, with assets. Um, our technology uh, allows for you to bring these assets into Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, wherever we have a plugin and literally drag and drop those assets in. The textures, the meshes and so on, uh, all are compartmentalized inside the RPC file on disk. And when you hit render, those, those RPCs will uh, uh, transfer the information to the rendering engine so that you get basically all these materials and textures without worrying about where the location of those textures are or anything like that, directly driven to the render, uh, and you'll you'll get those the results similar to this. Um, so just cover, uh, mention a couple of these. So our plugins that we have right now on the, uh, available, and these are all free as part of the ArcVision subscription. Uh, plugin for 3 Studio Max, Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, Unreal Engine, uh, and even AutoCAD. Uh, there's a plugin for Form Z, a uh, handful of others that we're working on uh, at this point in time. Um, just to say that uh, before I get into the next slide, and demo, uh, 3 Studio Max is where we've authored all of our content and in, in uh, historically. This is shifting uh, as we speak. There are lots of tools that we're building. Uh, again, we'll come into some of those in the next webinar uh, or two. Um, but Max is where we've primarily authored most of our content. And before I wrap up the presentation today, I'll cover one project, which is um, from our friends at uh, Collier's Engineering. Um, we did a great project uh, with them. I'll show a few, few screen grabs of that and just talk about it more in detail at the end. But uh, they, in this case, they have a 3 Studio Max artist who's using one of our um, exporters for, for Max and able to get that data uh, out as an RPC and over into Revit for their designers to work on. And I'll show that in a bit. So I'll hop right into a demo. the demo here. Uh, Corey, as you're as you're hopping over to the demo, I do just want to uh, welcome some of the others that joined here uh, in the last couple of minutes. And I did want to mention that the Q and A is a little icon down at the bottom of the screen on the Zoom user interface. So that is the best place for us to see your questions. So as they pop up, feel free to place them in there. So that's all I wanted to say. Corey, off to you in the demo. Awesome. I'll I'll just add that chat chat is dis disabled for all participants. So please, if you have questions, just uh, drop them in the Q and A. Um, all right. So I will cover just some more DNA of the RPC before I do uh, come more, some more in depth show and tell. But I wanted to just talk about um, the RPC and its DNA from the standpoint of um, well, I'm showing it in Revit, but from the standpoint of all applications through the Revit lens here that we have. Um, I mentioned that the RPC has geometry and it has materials and textures all stored in the file. Um, there are a few other parts and pieces, uh, and I'll show uh, another application where we're, our content manager avail where these RPCs are sourced from and drag and dropped into the to your CAD or BIM application here in just a second. But there's a there's a thumbnail, there's a preview of this uh, of the model that you have. There's also a proxy mesh uh, or proxy object that is stored inside the RPC, uh, and that's a very basically the very first thing that you see when you start to consume an RPC in any of the applications that uh, our plugins uh, are in. So from left to right in this. Uh, screen here. Uh, I should select this because I'm not 100% sure what you all see on your screen as far as mirroring goes and stuff. But um, 
this is the same RPC from left to right. Uh, this uh, RPC here is in what we call billboard uh, format. So this has basically two, uh, three, three different planes that you can uh, see the object from. So you get the scale of the RPC um, and just generally understand the size of it and placement and things like that. Uh, the second op, uh, one here is a simplified mesh version. So basically, we take the uh, uh, the mesh and hide all the faces, and you get at least some uh, more three dimensional representation of the asset. We are working on this technology a little bit more to um, potentially uh, introduce uh, using solids as opposed to mesh. Um, but this is uh, this is this has been a pretty big introduction in the last few months for us. And then the next one is a custom mesh. Uh, it looks very similar to the, the simplified mesh because uh, we're using pretty much the same data, but I uh, took this model and I brought it into uh, Blender ref um, and decimated the, the mesh and I exported out a GLB file. And then I attached that GLB file to the custom mesh operation. And that's um, that, that it's a little less polygonally intense uh, for the Revit viewport. And then, then there's a bounding box representation. That's the simplest form that we have. Why am I bringing up proxy mesh? Well, I bring up proxy mesh uh, predominantly because I feel like it's part of uh, RPC's superpowers here, which is that um, first off, we don't overburden the CAD package with a bunch of faces and triangles and mesh and stuff like that. Um, you know, one person like this in the 3D form might be. Um, you know, anywhere between could be, you know, 9,000 triangles to uh, 900,000, depending on how detailed you have the mesh. Um, so we we take that and we don't want to put those 900,000 face triangles inside of Revit. It'll slow down Revit, obviously. Um, so these proxies become what I call, um, an, an, a, a, I say, a proxy for a future transaction. So the proxy object is there. It's low overhead in the Revit project or SketchUp or Rhino or wherever you're using the RPC. And at render time is when the complexity of the model behind inside the RPC is, is delivered to the to the rendering engine. And let the rendering engine chew on all the triangles, all the um the 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 detail inside the materials and so on and so forth. Okay, so that proxy mesh um ultimately just saves a bunch of bandwidth in, in these applications. So we'll we'll move uh, further down the line uh, in our in our uh, future webinars. We'll talk about the importance of uh, and different use cases, if you will, of each one of these uh, types of um, proxy objects. Uh, while I'm here, I just want to kind of start out and point out that um, these objects RPCs will render with Enscape. They'll render with V-Ray for Revit. They'll also render with Revit Render. So um, as this fires up, uh, I'll say we try to keep the RPC application agnostic and render agnostic. So we uh, we, we have some pitfalls here and there, but we, we do try really hard to make sure that basically any rendering engine can consume the RPC data. All right, um, so these are all full in the round uh, assets. You can manipulate, scroll around, all that good stuff. They're all uh, they're all there. There's some other trees in the background over there. Um, but uh, so en Enscape renders those assets like that, and I will fire up V-Ray here, uh, and I'll let it I'll let it sit there so I can show you all the materials. So I'll just move on to the materials. Here once V-Ray fires up, and we'll talk about materials. Well, uh, I'm going to actually turn on realistic mode in this view. Um, I'm just kind of caveat here. The Revit viewport is not a ray trace viewport. It's not necessarily going to come out and render every single material 100% accurately. So uh, you'll see glass, I believe, will show up. Uh, maybe white in this case, or 
might be some transparency. We'll, we'll see what the results we get in this car. It's actually it came through pretty well. Um, it can be very finicky, uh, but this is the RPC directly in the Revit viewport. I'm not sure how many folks would really be using this viewport these days to to do any rendering, but but just just it goes to show how um, detailed we are we are with this agnostic approach to the content. We serve even the Revit viewport up the material information, the geometry, and so on and so forth. This is a pretty high detailed asset. There's I think over seven hundred fifty thousand triangles in this model altogether, brake calipers and all that stuff. All that's just coming through um, in the viewport there, pretty well. And there's I'm not going to rotate this around just yet because I want to show a couple uh, renderings. So let's just pop open V-Ray here as an example, uh, just to look at what materiality gets presented over to the renderer. So we take all the texture maps, all the material parameters, and we, um, with the help of in collaboration with Chaos Group, or Chaos, I should say, um, they're able to take all the parameters of the materials and translate them 100% um, into a V-Ray compatible uh, material. And so V-Ray is getting the most native material in in this rendering engine as it's consuming all this stuff. Um, we do the same similar for Enscape, uh, where we pass on Enscape, basically Enscape materials through the Enscape asset that gets created when we when the RPC is placed. And so again, it should be for every RPC, what you see is what you get, okay? Um, uh, I rendered the wrong camera, of course. Anyway, um, you can see these, uh, those people from uh, the Enscape image are rendering in, in V-Ray. Um, exactly as they were rendering in Enscape, except we've got some shadows coming in here from, from the trees that are uh, over my shoulder, if you will, in the camera. I'll close that and I will uh, change my view to materials and just render so we can just see this car. It might take a couple more seconds. Yeah, uh, while you're while you're rendering, uh, Corey, we actually uh, had a great question with that last render that popped up with the people. There was a question of whether or not in the future, if there's any plans to have people inside of the vehicles. Uh, very good question. Yes, there are plans for that. Uh, we have uh, the ability to do that. So that touches on a very good uh, component of the RPC that I hadn't mentioned, which is RPC can store also variants or parameters, uh, if you will. So inside of the RPC, uh, we can actually store even another model, uh, like a person, as an example. And uh, we can make that a variable or a parameter that gets exposed for you to turn off and on in your in your CAD application or BIM application through our through our plugin. So you could select an RPC. Uh, like like this car and go and edit its parameters and actually turn on a driver. Um, we're not there. We're not adding the drivers to, to the vehicles just yet. Um, there's a lot to debate about it, whether we're going to add drivers and passengers and kids in the back seat. Do we need to add car seats and things like this? There's all kinds of craziness that gets involved with thinking about these, but f f definitely sh uh, short term, we're going to be adding, uh, we'll be adding drivers uh, to vehicles for sure. Um, so look, this is V-Ray. This is, you know, obviously one of the most photorealistic renders on the, on the planet. Um, you can see pretty well all the reflections and in the rubber on the tires and even down to the Porsche logo and things like that. This is the glass is, is V-Ray glass and all this stuff is rendering the rate reflections. All that is delivered from the RPC to the rendering engine. All right. Um, Touch on just kind of some before I start dragging and dropping some assets in. I'll I'll mention um, uh, what the what the functions are at least in Revit. Um, in Revit, when you drag and drop an RPC into uh, sorry, when you drag and drop an RPC into Revit, uh, we make a, a family that gets cached uh, in uh, local app data folder, and that 
family stores a uh, bunch of different information, but uh, ultimately um, it it's uh, the RPCs have what's uh, called the render appearance. And you can see here, uh, there's a name and title on there. Um, you can edit the render appearance. This is where you might have pro properties and parameters show up for RPCs if they have them. So in, a, in the situation with a car that I was just talking about, you can we can select that car and we can change the car paint color on it, for instance, inside of uh, directly inside of Revit um, without having to uh, go into the your 3D package and edit the asset and move it, uh, sorry, export it back out. Um, so we we make the we make that family behind the scenes, and uh, that's uh, gets loaded in 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 Revit. And each one of these assets, um, as we make them, we we read the metadata for the from the RPC. So again, another layer of the RPC is we it carries around metadata with it, and that metadata informs Revit as to what category to put the RPC in. Um, so this boy here, you can see up here, he's listed in the entourage category. Um, this piece of furniture here is listed in the furniture category. And then this billboard tree here is listed under planting. Those are the three main categories that we put uh, the RPCs in. There are others, there are some other hoops that we can jump through to put um, RPCs in different categories. Uh, we just stick to these at this point in time. Uh, we will be handling some other, some of these other categories. Um, hopefully this summer we'll start to see some things around Revit 2025 that um, we'll be able to drive and push these piece of content into other categories. So that's, um, that is categories. And then I just wanted to touch on just the idea of placement, placing. What? How do you get these into Revit? How does an RPC even make its way into Revit? Um, for most of folks who are familiar with Revit and have been dealing with, um, have been dealing with uh, Revit for quite a while, uh, and maybe even dealing with um, RPCs, um, site components is one way to bring an RPC into Revit. This is a one of the native. Um, uh, RPC plugin options that ships with Revit. All the trees that are, and site assets that are part of Revit out of the box are all RPCs. Uh, so I can uh, grab, uh, let's say, a tree and place it. This is coming from that library, and this is actually attached to the last tree that I just placed here. And I can go ahead and actually just select any other tree that I want to uh, here. Some of the out of the box content uh, should be up in here. So American Beach and Blueberry Elder, these are all uh, assets that are um, that ship with Revit. And uh, that proxy didn't update, but the actual, when this will render, it will. Uh, it'll render with the beach tree. Um, I personally uh, don't, use this option very much and it's and it's more because um the content behind the scenes in the in the in that library is pretty antiquated um we're working with harlan to see what we can do about switching some of that content out we did some in revit 2024 and we'll see what we can do moving forward but um most of our content comes through avail um i will uh, just zoom out here. Avail is our content manager. We uh, de designed and made by the guys from Avail, uh, our sister company. Some of you uh, on the list were customers uh, using Avail already. Uh, here's a few channels that we have. So we have a pretty, pretty extensive collection that is just about to explode. We're about to just push a ton of content here over the next few months over the summer, you'll, you're gonna start seeing a ton of content coming. Um, but uh, I'll just go ahead and grab, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, say this law, law work channel, for instance, um, this is a uh, channel of content. 
and I'll just grab a, an asset and I'll slide this over and drag and drop this tree from avail directly into Revit. And this is the same tree that we were just looking at before, uh, but that's this basically the simplest way to get the content uh, from avail, drag and drop 100% uh, into the application. Okay. Um, I want to just kind of take a moment to just depart over to, let's say, SketchUp as an example, just to basically show um, the same idea, the same concept, and connect some dots here. The RPCs, uh, we have a bounding box here of, of our boy. We've got the chair RPC here, and then we've got uh, that palm tree. Uh, again, uh, I can uh, delete that tree, grab, come from avail, and just drag and drop uh, that asset directly here in SketchUp. And you can see down here on the bottom, there's this uh, process going on called RPC assemble. Um, that assembly process is preparing the data and caching it uh, behind the scenes so that um, when I come here and render with Enscape, Enscape's going to have the assets that it needs to have, the textures and all that stuff to be able to, to render that tree properly. Okay, so this tree, uh, that boy, and that chair all render 100% the same way inside of SketchUp and Enscape as we were just showing inside of, inside of Revit. Um, and that drag and drop process is exactly the same, right? Um, uh, and then just to kind of jump over to something even maybe more off the rails than most people are used to seeing these days. Um, I've, I have Unreal Engine open here. And again, I can take that same tree, drag and drop that through our RPC plugin that's uh, part of Unreal Engine. And that tree gets placed inside the uh, Unreal Content Browser. And we can place that asset directly in Unreal Engine. Again, the same asset, the same textures, the same scale, all that stuff, all contained from the RPC directly um, uh, delivered to, to, to Unreal Engine. Um, Sam, any other questions that I could hit on here? Yeah, this is actually really great timing. So yeah, we just got a question that asks, do you ever plan to have a channel that will have various materials that can be used to assign to objects for rendering? Uh, that's a very, very good question. Uh, short answer is yes, we do. Uh, we don't have a timeline on it yet, but um, I'll just say, uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> uh, I've talked about ma the materials in, in, in the RPC, um, and as we make uh, many thousands of objects, uh, there are many, many materials that get created um, as part of that process. In those materials, we're um, developing a process right now to be able to democratize the materials and to be able to even, um, you know, as you're building the RPCs, uh, allow you to build up um, a material library of your own as you're building your own material, your RPC library up at the same time. So absolutely, um, the material uh, material will be uh, democratized, if you will, as part of the uh, as part of our asset process, if you will, absolutely coming. Yeah, I mean, that's that's huge. I feel like all of this just, you know, have seen you be able to easily place these in each of these platforms is uh, just democratizing that workflow in general. Like I'm sure we all do a lot of work where we're working with people in different programs. There's different times when you use SketchUp versus Unreal Engine, um, and it can always be such a pain to, to switch those through each of them and then be frustrated of, of what they look like and if you can get that asset into the other one. So this is huge. I'm um, so happy that we get to, get to share this with others. There's no other questions right now. Did you have some other stuff that you wanted to, to showcase? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about uh, another kind of future roadmap element here with regards to the RPCs. Um, uh, I'll actually uh, just zoom back out to the to avail for just a second. Um, this this channel is not in the most public of states at the moment. We're literally literally in the middle of updating this channel. 
um, things kind of got bottlenecked today and we weren't able to get everything fully into this channel. But uh, if I clear this um, out, I just want to kind of point out uh, probably just best to just show the titles on this stuff. So uh, RPC as of today only is storing one, I'll call it one LOD, one uh, level of detail uh, of a number of triangles and faces and stuff like that in and, and actually texture sizes and all that inside of the RPC. We are building out a solution where we'll be able to support multiple LODs inside of the RPC. So uh, what we have kind of cut our teeth on right now and uh, with our partnership with, um, with LobWork is uh, first off, just starting with two LODs. And right now we've done this brute force. And in this library, there'll be two forms of content. Uh, you'll have, uh, I should say, two, LD, two LODs. There'll be an LOD4, which is basically real-time ready. And then we'll have LOD full or zero, which is um, ray tracer ready, if you will. Um, or or Nanite ready, as an example, if you're, if you're a, a, a Unreal Engine user, these are assets that'll be full polygonally uh, correct and uh, accurate and not not necessarily, you know, super optimized for uh, real-time use. Um, so that LOD uh, side of the equation is, uh, it's pretty energizing right now because we're, we're really uh, at the cusp of, you know, just building more and more into the RPC for it to be that much more um, kind of robust and powerful. Um, so the LOD support and multi-LOD support will be coming um, uh, down the road here for sure. All right. So I did, didn't want to mention that. Corey, what about uh, animated RPCs? So that's uh, we've got a question from Jay that says, do you still have animated RPCs? Very good question. So um, uh, officially, we're in reboot mode for animated RPCs. Um, the... The complexities there are um, pretty, pretty deep and wide. Um, we have been already working on this. Um, you know, one of the primary complexities is where is the animated asset going to end up in, and can the animation, uh, let's call it functionality parameters, whatever you want, be consumed by whatever application it's going to be used in. So in a case where you say Revit and uh, Enscape, as an example, is it possible for us to get uh, one of these trees, uh, quote unquote, in an animated state or a person or a car in an animated state so that um, inside the RPC, it gets uh, consumed by Enscape and Revit and Enscape can handle the animation. Uh, as of today, absolutely not. It's not even, it's not possible. Okay. But if we're talking about Unreal Engine and things like that, when we could, uh, possibly store in the information, uh, we can deliver the animation data through, uh, if not through, um, the RPC directly, we can deliver it in conjunction with the RPC through our data, data Smith, um, side of the world that we have, which we have a direct beeline, if you will, we can write out data Smith files. So we can combine both the, the best of both worlds, basically the RPC and data Smith and marry those two things together. So um, definitely working on the parts and pieces of animation. There's a lot to chew on and digest and for us to kind of build out. Um, and in all honesty, we literally just hooked up um, our legacy animation functionality again for uh, for three studio max so we had a customer um rk and k who's who does a lot of infrastructure projects and a lot of animations and they rely heavily on our animated rpcs flowing up and down highways and clover clover intersections for the these tractor trailers and cars to go around so that customers and clients can see uh what these traffic patterns are they use our rpcs to do that um we had some issues with uh, transforms not being able to um, operate and function in, in, in V-Ray properly. So we had to go back and make some bug fixes there. But during that lesson, we learned a little bit more even about um, 
you know, what we have to think about as we move forward with the topic of animation. Any other questions there, Sam? Yeah, so not any other questions now. We do have a poll that just went live. So if you all could let us know what design application you use, that will really help us um, understand, you know, in the future as we do more digital events, which ones that we can really dive into more and uh, showcase more information there. I know that you had mentioned that for future digital events that we would dive in a little bit more to your, towards creating um, or how one could customize some of the RPCs. So I, I do want to note that we will be having a digital event July 10th on that. So um, some of the questions of like, how how can I curate this or create parameters for it? Well, we'll showcase some of that there. But um, Corey, yeah, I'll let you I'll let you take it back here and let you know if any other questions pop up. Super. Um, so up until this point in the conversation, I've talked about basically what I'll say is entourage, right? The cars, people, trees, furniture, things like that. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with um, uh, Todd and Sarah over at uh, Collier's Engineering over the last uh, couple months off and on. And uh, they have a project that they're working on. And um, Todd as a vision specialist uh, has uh, basically a, a digital uh, set that he has for um, a large area of, of city in the US where uh, he's built that model over time and he's put a lot of time and energy into it. There's a, a lot into it. He's um, He's got scan data, he's got model data, he's got all kinds of data resting and living in this Three Studio Max environment, um, and he's got. We'll probably, I think we're going to get a webinar with Todd in the future. I hope because uh, we want to talk about some of the workflows that he uses uh, to to prepare his assets for uh, use in Three Studio Max. Because he does a lot of a lot of uh, rendering with Max, but he also gets uh, he does a lot of work in Unity as well. Um, so one of the questions that they had was, "Hey, can we get this?" Can we get a site model um, uh, of this this max model? Can we get a portion of this max model into Revit so that we can use it as a base for us to model on top of, if you will, or get our Revit project lined up with so that we can uh, have context around uh, the building that we're working on and uh, have it render with Enscape. So those are the basic requirements. Um, we, uh, this is a, this is one of the images that came out of this, uh, the, the facade here that, uh, sits in kind of the middle here is, and the people and the, and the railings and the wall here, uh, the trees in the foreground, these are all assets that were part of the Revit model. Um, and these are Enscape assets, uh, and, uh, on that plaza there, uh, maybe some RPCs, I'm not 100% sure, but definitely uh, the building that's here and that you can see uh, this part in the background and uh, this edge of the building over here, this is actually an RPC. And this is a building uh, that was exported out of 3Studio Max as an RPC and uh, then just basically drag and drop in place in the Revit uh, underneath that building, though, we also made, uh, with Todd's data set, an RPC of uh, the terrain plus surrounding context buildings. So uh, around this building and, and other uh, other renderings, you'd see uh, high-rise buildings. I'm not sure. I think this is part of the building. I'm not sure if that's part of, um, I think it's part of the building, not part of a background building. But uh, those of other buildings, uh, contextually around two or three square blocks, I think, are all part of that digital terrain, if you will, in site model. Again, all uh, prep, prepped in 3 Studio Max and exported out so that we could drag and drop that model into Revit. I will hop back over to, oh, I didn't mean to do that quite yet. I'm going to hop back over to Revit just to... Um, See if I can pull up this data set so you all can can kind of see what this looks like in in Revit. I 
have to make a disclaimer. I can't render this right now. Um, uh, during my prep today, I disconnected the RPCs, unfortunately, to, to be able to render this. But um, the most important part, though, is to say that this terrain model here is using uh, one of the um, uh, proxy types, which is uh, custom mesh. And this custom mesh is uh, literally, um, you know, four plane, just it, it's as bare minimum as information as uh, I'd say we needed to be able to place um, not just the site inside of Revit, but place the building on the site. So uh, if I take this model and move it over uh, and want to place this model back, you're going to see it's got a origin point on it. And this origin point actually uh, has, um, I'm going to mess this up here. This origin point on the mesh actually lines up with the origin point on the site terrain. Uh, we select, before we write out the RPC from 3 Studio Max, we select the origin of the mesh that's getting exported out, and we make sure that the mesh for the building and the mesh of the terrain object have the same origin point so that we can make sure that these objects overlap uh, and line up 100% the way they're supposed to inside of Revit. Um, I'll touch on the building. The building also has a custom mesh. Um, the pretty um, probably the most uh, interesting part for me about this, and I just kind of um, latched onto this as as a as a kind of as an architect because I had practiced architecture for quite a while. Um, this building model has some cutout in it that we had to re basically take the model inside of 3 Studio Max and remove part of the mesh or part of the model so that the building addition could be added to uh, the RPC and that the RPC and the, and the Revit model wouldn't actually collide and cause any visual um, uh, discrepancies, if you will. So you can see there's uh, a brick wall here and a little uh, flanking brick wall over here. But in between those two brick walls is we cut that, um, Todd cut that mesh out as well as you can see, there's a kind of a, a section up here, a larger rectilinear section up there that's cut out. Okay. And so back to, you know, the slide and look at that image, um, that flanking wall uh, is, is here and that uh, larger um, rectilinear wall on the bottom that was cut out is, is up here and that longer skinnier rectangle is, is, is up in this area here. So the floors for this space go back into the, into the RPC basically. And so the camera could be set up uh, literally inside the RPC and coming back out, looking out back out the, the windows of this new space that they're adding onto the building. So that was that was pretty interesting. I, I kind of coined it as we were doing digital demo, right? We had an existing model, existing building, and we were demolishing it and demolishing some triangles and then making the RPC and putting it back into, into Revit. So that project was, uh, was uh, it's still ongoing, but it, it's, it's something that, um, you know, we're breaking out of the just the entourage, right? Um, we're breaking out of just the trees, cars, and people into, uh, you know, being able to not just write out from 3 Studio Max, but literally be able to take a Revit project, uh, Revit building, and export that out as an RPC and let a SketchUp modeler um, or Rhino artist or whatever, take that model with all its materiality that's been put in your Revit project and start to just place that model into their, their you know, let's say digital terrain that they've got set up in Rhino and, and literally hit render with Enscape or, or V-Ray or any of those uh, rendering engines over there, including Rhino render. And the RPC will render exactly as you left it from, from within, side of, within side of Revit when you wrote it out. So. Um, we're really excited about the future. Uh, there is, um, you know, a lot of stuff coming down the road. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is, I think you're seeing just kind of the tip of the iceberg as far as where, where um, the content is going, where the creation is going. Um, and like Sam said, the next one, 
couple of the next webinars, you'll start to see how you can start to create your own content, manage your own content, and, and start using more and more RPCs in your company. Yeah, this is this is awesome, Corey. I am just watching you do this. This sort of saved so many headaches uh, when I was in-house visualizing with architects, just like being able to collaborate from you know 3ds Max back to Revit, just because you know workflows aren't always so linear in the way that you progress a project. So this is very very cool to see. Uh, so we are about twelve minutes to the hour. So Corey, if you're okay with it, do you mind? Um, opening it up to some questions right now. That's totally fine. Yep. Okay. Okay. So feel free to add any of the questions inside of the Q and A box. Uh, we can also try something when uh, just to see if you could also raise the hand. I um, mean, we could let you on. If that doesn't work, we'll go back to the Q and A. But just letting you know that that's available as well. If there are, you know, if you have any questions of like how do I learn more? I want to get more information. Then, uh, Corey, if you could put that slide back on the screen, it'd be great to um, showcase that. So you can email the sales at arcvision.com and uh, you know the team will get back to you as soon as they can with more information there. Um, you know, as we've kind of like gone through this hour, I want, Corey, it was fun hearing about some of the history of RPC. Can you share once again, like what RPC stands for and like maybe even like kind of where you got um, like the evolution of it and, and where that is today, just kind of heading out of this, the power of RPC? Absolutely. So RPC originally stood for rich photorealistic content. And again, right at the top of the call, just talking about, you know, using photographs as a basis for, um, getting very complicated objects renderable in um in Max at the time or Viz uh without without having to model it, right? That's the big thing. Like we use these photographs. So rich photorealistic content was the original kind of acronym. Um now we haven't like officially made this change, but my my take on this now is uh rich uh RPC is responsive platform agnostic content. And that um, I think really speaks to what we're up to these days uh, with with the with the file format and and so on. And I think um, you know again in the future webinars, you all will be able to see you know how we're able to take the file and use RPC as a center point, if you will, or origin, and be able to spin off uh, other uh, variants or twins from that to be used in different use cases. Um, so. The responsiveness right now is maybe limited through our plugins uh, in Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, and so on, uh, and Unreal Engine. Um, but the content itself uh, and the meshes and textures and things like that, even down to the materials, can uh, essentially be democratized in, in such a level that you can be able to consume them individually in different parts and pieces. So you could even imagine down the road uh, texture maps being another library, not just the materials, but even down to the texture maps where those libraries could be living and breathing as part of this the platform that you have, right? And the content that needs to be responsive um, is much broader and will be much broader than just the, the CAD and BIM and DCC applications. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for expanding on that. I just I know that we started with that. And I think that I kind of love always learning about the history of, of companies and evolution. So I just wanted to bring that back to uh, the center of attention here as we close out. But we do have a question. Uh, the question is, is there a plan to add some online contents on the YouTube channel? It would be great to see some of the highlights of these new developments. So uh, I do want to note that we are recording this session. We will be able to, you know, use it for the, the different elements in the future. And with each of the digital events, we're going to be focusing on different products. So for instance, I will be doing an Epic Games one in the future. There will be Vantage as well. So a lot of the different platforms we'll dive into further. Uh, Corey, do you want to expand on that at all? I know we I, we do have a help center. Um, yeah, that is well, also I'll, helpful. I'll, I'll say, um... You know, admittingly, we've been pretty um, under the radar for quite some time. 
uh, since I've been on board for the last four and a half years. Uh, we haven't pushed a, too much information out. That's changing. This is the this is the a pivotal moment for us to just start this webinar and start pushing out a lot more information a lot faster. Um, we've had our heads down on the engineering side of all of this, really like blinders on and going. So the educational content, uh, there's a lot for us to produce. Um, and we will start streaming this stuff out even in bite-sized chunks. I like to record little five minute videos these days and start to put these up on YouTube, very specific topics and, and use cases. Um, and we're gonna try to start taking advantage of, of you know, those little blasts of information and start getting more out there for sure. Yeah, but that's it's great to hear you even ask that question because it's good to know like where the is there demand out there for that are people you know seeking that out so thank you for bringing that up and then we also have another question from Jay we have been a client with RPC since the first versions and it is great to see this grow I was always worried that my favorite content would disappear thanks so for my sorry thanks so much uh, for an awesome product so not a question but just a compliment so uh, Corey I hope that puts a smile on your face Jay thank you for sharing the positive words like it's uh uh, I know that it will go a very long way with the team. So thank you for, for sharing that information. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. Awesome. So let's see if there's not any other questions. Um, I just want to, you know, thank everyone for taking the time to be here. Once again, if you have any additional questions at all, uh, feel free to email the sales at arcvision.com. Um, also feel free to visit the website, www.arcvision.com. Uh, that will also have some information for you as well. And we will have these digital events happening pretty fre frequently over the next season. So we wanna thank you for taking your time out of your day to spend with us. I hope that you learned something new, um, or if not, at least left inspired about some of the uh, technology and possibilities in the future. One of the ones that I know everyone is very excited about is uh, talking about Fovia, one of ArcVision's new tools, which is great for publishing assets and being able to um, configure assets as well. So um, kind of like the, the use case that Corey showed here, kind of looking at it at a bigger picture and understanding cloud-based tools and how we can continue to improve artist workflows. So with that, Corey, is there any last thing you want to say here? No, I'll just reiterate. Thank you everyone for your time today. It's, and I know your times are uh, valuable and precious. Um, uh, and thank you so much for stopping by. Let us know if you have any questions for sure. Awesome. Thank cool. you.